Hey guys, this is Red Berry, and today I'm making red beans and rice. Uh, red beans and rice is a very, very common thing in Louisiana. I'm sure you've heard about it. Um, we just eat it a lot. We like it, and I especially like it uh, with fried chicken. Fried chicken, red beans and rice. Mm-mm, that's se bon. But today, I'm not doing the fried chicken. I'm only doing the red beans and rice with sausage. And, um... I'm using one pound of Hillshire form smoked sausage. You can use anything you want. Doesn't matter. I've used all kind of local sausages too. My husband is a sausage lover. He loves trying out all kinds of sausages that are local. But uh, anyway, I cut them up in small pieces because that's the way my family likes it. They like to... Uh, you know, some people put big lengths of sausage in it at, and to where you have to cut it with your fork as you're eating it. But uh, my family just likes like a spoonful of red beans and rice and there's little pieces of sausage in it. So that is how I do it. And the secret to getting it this nice color and the oils, the grease cooked down, rendered down out of it, you put it on high. Stand by it. Though. Watch it very close because it will burn. It will go from lovingly dark and delicious to scorch and burnt quickly. But uh, I browned some of the edges. And then after that, I turned it down to about a medium heat maybe. And depending on your stove, maybe a little bit lower. But what you want is it to just cook real slow. Uh, you want it bubbling as you can see it and hear it, but you don't want it, uh, you know, really flying. So you want to saute it lightly, and I leave it like this for a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and let all that grease come out of the sausage. And I will remove some of it, but I will also leave some of it for flavoring. And to that, while that's cooking, I chopped up... Uh, one whole onion, and I'm going to add that to that, and it doesn't matter, you can see my onions are, some are chopped big, some are chopped smaller, it doesn't matter, this is going to cook down, and you know, you won't notice all the different cuts of onion. Okay, once I put the onions in, standing near my pot, I put, I bring my temperature back up to high, and I'm going to kind of touch, get some brown touches on these onions, just like I did the sausage, and I'll probably cook them on high and bring, and bring them down. I may lower it a little bit and let them sweat out, but um, this is what I have. I found a pound of red kidney beans. There's, sorry about the shadows, let me put it out here. This is just a pound of dried red kidney beans. Sometimes it just says red beans. Sometimes it says small red beans. Anything you want in red beans. You could basically cook any dried bean like this. But look at what the price I paid for it. 59 cents. And dried beans are up to a dollar or more per pound. And what I did, this is only half of this pound. Soaked it in water overnight. And Look how many I have now. These swell up at least double in size. So when you soak it, you want to give it a big enough bowl and you want the water to be at least two inches. Uh, when you first put in the water, I put it at least four inches above my dry beans. So that way in the morning, they, you won't have any dry beans sticking out. So soak, you got to start this the night before, soak it overnight. And there's some quick ways to uh, soak beans. I think like soak them for an hour or bring it to a boil and rinse them or something. I'm not sure. I usually don't use that method, so I'm not that keen up on it. But um, this is the beans. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cook these onions, just sausage, onions, and potatoes. You cook this all down. And you put that with rice. Oh my God. That's the bone too. 
just the sausage and onions I can literally eat. It smells so delicious. And as of yet, I haven't put any seasoning in it. No salt, no pepper, nothing. And uh, I'm going to brown this. And then I'm going to remove it from this pan and put it in a bowl, cover it, and let it sit on my cabinet. And then I'm going to put the red beans in, the red beans, not the rice, the red beans in here uh, with water way above them and start cooking them. I'm going to cook them for a couple of hours. And when they become tender, I'm going to mash some of them. But I'll try to show you all. I'm going to mash some of them. And then that's when I'll add this stuff back into it. That's the way I do my red beans and rice. Uh, you know, you, some people just, some people don't even brown the sausage. They just drop the sausage in the red beans and rice. In the red beans. Sorry, I keep saying red beans and rice because it's like one word around here. Um, I've also cooked them in the crock pot before. So that's another way, but I just happen not to have a crock pot with me here in Utah and I pray that I can get my van fixed and get home by you know the next two weeks we shall see my van has been in the shop four times since I've been here so that's like four times in six months and uh, what happened is my coolant system just basically rusted out we have so much humidity down there in Louisiana that it's very hard on equipment. And uh, we bought the van old. It's a handicap, full-size handicap lift van because I have a 14-year-old son uh, who has cerebral palsy because he was born two and a half months early. And um, he's always been in a wheelchair and he cannot do anything for himself. So we have to have a lift van. And the new ones... You cannot touch them. They're above sixty thousand dollars, and uh, they're. If you notice around where I live and here in Utah, even you don't see many on the road at all. So our only solution was to buy an older one, and you know, I don't know. Evidently, they haven't. They hadn't changed nothing on this van. It didn't have many miles, but I guess it still sat, and the humidity got to it. But anyway, that's my problem. That's why I'm not home yet. And uh, I have enjoyed myself here in Utah. It is beautiful. If y'all ever get a chance to visit Cedar City, Utah, it's really, really nice. They have skiing and resorts, you know, within driving distance. Uh, altitude is pretty high up. I want to say 6,000 feet or something like that. Similar to that, I don't know. Maybe I can put it in the, you know, notations uh, if I look it up. But it's really, really nice. The summers here are awesome. I can finally understand why people say I can't wait for summer. In South Louisiana, in the middle of summer, you just want to die. I mean, the humidity and the heat is so bad, you just can't wait for winter. You know, and up here... Man, it's so vibrant and alive, and everybody's having fun up here, and there's festivals, too. Um, but you can go out, walk around outside, enjoy yourself, and sweat very, very little, if any. Most days, not at all. And even though the temperatures get in the 90s, the humidity is so low, it's not bad at all. So, uh, I can finally see why people say they can't wait for summer. Okay, guys, I'm going to go to a quick break with this video and remove this to the pot, and then I'll come back and show you all the red beans. Okay, guys, this is the red beans in the pot, and as you can see, there's a good four fingers of water above the red beans. And, uh, you know, the shimmering and oil you see is because there was some oil residue left from... Uh, doing the onions and this is my onions and sausage so I'm going to cover this let this sit bring this to a boil and try to cook it on a a little light rolling boil I don't want it to boil over because it can with all the starches in it although I did rinse it several times and that helps remove some of the starches 
but uh, I'm gonna bring this to a boil and let it cook and when it you know it's gone a while I'll bring you back and show you okay guys I have the uh, my beans that are pretty well cooked and I basically I, I didn't have my slow cooker like I said and I usually do this in my slow cooker just because it's so simple it cooks while I sleep uh, and of course I don't have it but what I did is I just put this on simmer all night left it on simmer and um, I know it may not be the smartest thing to do but you do like you want uh, it survived it stayed on the very low very similar to a slow cooker all night and uh, my beans are done now what I do is I tend to mash a few of them that'll give you that thickness uh, you know that we look for and I had put my sausage and onions in the refrigerator so I'm just gonna try to add it here won't be able to get it all out but just to show y'all um, I just wanted to show y'all I just dump it in there and then I'm gonna let this cook for probably at least an hour if it's if you're in a rush for it put it on high and let it kind of boil down and it'll be basically ready but I'm not in a rush for it so uh, I'm gonna just let it kind of simmer most of the afternoon but that's basically it that's one way there are many many ways to do red beans and rice but that's one way if you don't have any other equipment besides a pot a spoon you know the stove then you can still do it okay I do mine like I said in the slow cooker just because it's so easy if you don't have a slow cooker in your kitchen you know it's something you may want to look towards uh, getting in your kitchen because it, it I just love mine I do a lot of recipes in it and um, makes it so easy you know if you're having a busy day or just a bad day a feeling bad have a lot of those days and um, it's a good way to get your family supper on the table without you having to do anything physically during during that all the time but uh, I didn't I had just a pot and so I just did it you know came up with a way I mean our grandparents made red beans and rice with just a pot and a spoon I guarantee you so um, you can you can do it also and like I said I'm gonna add these uh, sausage and onions oh and I forgot to tell y'all too I also added a little bit of season oil mostly just shake I don't know maybe a teaspoon or two some ground pepper black pepper uh, cayenne of course cayenne goes in everything I eat it gets sprinkled on everything I eat it's really good for you look up the benefits of cayenne pepper and uh, I use a lot of it and also garlic powder I use some of that and um, it's a basically taste and see kind of dish uh, just keep tasting it you'll probably have to you know add more salt it takes a lot of salt I find dried beans do tend to take uh, pretty much salt and um, that's how you do it if y'all have any questions if I can help somebody with it something I don't mind at all post the comment below send me a message anyway um, you know you can get to me and uh, I love to answer comments and I love to help people you know discover something new that's my thing always discover something new be nice to everybody today and I hope everybody's having a good day alright everybody take care and God bless bye